important. One, because you have the opportunity to do that, but also because I'm talking about like, how are you treating your business? Like, are you treating it like a business or is it more so like a hobby and kind of like how you can tell the difference, how you know you're going into like a hobby mode versus a business mode. And then like the why behind we do some of the things. And if you are in that hobbyist role, which I think a lot of us eventually at some point get guilty of that, getting into the hobby role, because we are, we do have the freedom of running our business whenever we want. It's easy to get to slide into hobby like actions as opposed to like, I am running a business. Um, and especially if you've never done this sort of thing before, you're like, I don't even know like how, what's the first way to start running your own business. Cause like for me, I've never done it. I mean, I was an independent contractor when I was a hairstylist. So I, I understand taxes and all that stuff and how, how I have to like drum my own business up. But um, there, like I watched a zoom the other day and I have been going through this um, leadership training and I've learned a lot about like, how can you tell that you're in a hobby mentality? Like, and if you want it to be a hobby, like there is obviously nothing wrong with that because it's your own business. Like you can choose if that's something you want to do is run it as a hobby. That's totally fine. I'll match your efforts. We'll work together, whatever your goals are, whatever your goals might be. But I'm not going to like push you if it's, if you're not wanting to make substantial business income with this and truly have a business mindset. Um, and if you feel like you're not seeing the growth that you want to see, or, um, maybe you're not building the way you want to build it, you might be sliding into those hobby, those hobby actions. And you kind of got to look at the way that you're truly treating your business. Like, how are you talking about it? How are you going about your day? And kind of compare it to maybe even a traditional business. Like if you're calling it like your side job you're going to get paid like a side job. If you're saying like, Oh, it's my little like side hustle, then you're going to get side hustle money. It's not going to be business income money. And let's like take, for example, a traditional business. Let's just say like, we'll go with, I don't know, a donut shop. I don't know. <laughs> there isn't a whole lot of those around, but for example, what are the things they don't just like shut their doors whenever they feel like it. Same thing. Like with your business, you can't just like shut out and like not post or not, engage with their customers or anything like that. And traditional businesses, they look at like, okay, what are ways that I need to market in my area? Same thing with your social media. How are you marketing towards who you're trying to reach? It's the exact same way. It's just, we don't have a building. Everything for us is done via online, which is nice, but it also can be a double-edged sword. So sometimes in order for you to see the growth and success that you're wanting, like we can look at all the things that we say we're doing all the time, but I think really in order for us to, if you're wanting to shift into like, I need to make this more business because I do want that business income, you need to shift into the mentality. Okay. What are the things that I'm not doing? Because I think it's easy for us to check off all the things that you are doing, but really reflecting on like, what are the things that I'm not doing? And once you start shifting into the action of the stuff that you're not doing, that's when you'll typically see that growth in your business. So like you might be adding to your network and maybe occasionally interacting and sometimes you're posting, but what are the things that you're not doing consistently? Are you reaching out to your customers consistently? Are you, um, really taking a look at your social media and evaluating what kind of feedback you're getting from people. I told my son to bring out my water because I knew my mouth was going to get dry. <laughs> um, so you really got to look at what are the things that I'm not really heavily focused on. Maybe it is going live. I know like Claire and I have that conversation. She's like, I know I just have to do it. Like you just have to do it. And I know it's uncomfortable sometimes, but looking at all the things that are going to make your business grow and looking at the things that you're not doing on a consistent basis and figuring out a way to implement that. And that's where you're like your IPAs come into play too. So I kind of wanted to go through each of the IPAs and explain from like a business perspective, why it is that we do those things. Cause I think it's easy to get this list of stuff that you have to do. And you're like over time, like it's just like a check the box thing. And maybe you're not even like coming in it intentionally or you're not setting up your day intentionally so that you understand this is what's going on. This is when I can fit this in. 
and the importance of that and you're putting a little more priority behind it. So I'm going to kind of go through like the typical IPAs that we do every single day and then I'm going to highlight some other things that you do need to make sure that you're implementing into your business and then we can kind of have like an open forum about like different ways that we can do that. Maybe you've tried some of these things um, or you have a different perspective on how that could work. So the first thing is adding to your network. Why is that so important? I know we talk about this sometimes, but adding to your network is so important because somebody used this analogy and Sarah, you'll probably get a kick of this and kick out of this. Um, like what if Target was like only the same 20 people can come in every day? Do you think they would see a growth in their revenue? No, because eventually those people would have everything that they need for the month and then they wouldn't come in for a couple weeks. Maybe they buy like things here and there, but you can't have just 20 people shopping at Target. Same thing goes for your business. Like if you have just the same, you know, 500, 600, 1,000 people, especially with social media because all of them aren't seeing that, your stuff. It's like a fraction of your audience that actually sees your things. But it's like you're just marketing to the same people over and over and over again. And like you might start running through those people like you have a conversation with one. It goes nowhere. They're, it's not their time yet. Maybe you do one of them as your customer. Maybe one of them's your promoter. But eventually you're going to like run that creek dry and you need to bring new people in. Posting the products to your stories. I think this is such a crucial thing because we are not Lavelle. Like Lavelle does an amazing job marketing on their own. They're an amazing company with an amazing compensation plan with amazing products. Yes. But what is, what is going to set you apart? How are you implementing these products? People need to see you utilizing them on a daily basis because if you're talking about all these things, but they don't actually see you using the product, they're like, do they really believe in it then? Are they actually using it? They start to question like your validity a little bit too. And I just think it gets, piques people's interest. I like to highlight different things. Sometimes I show all three steps. Sometimes I just show one. Sometimes I show two. Um, but I think it's also important for us not to just do, and I'm guilty of this too, like the morning routine. It's nice to be like, yes, it is one, two, three, and you're finished in your first three, 30 minutes, which is so nice. But I think it's really good for your audience to see like, where are you at throughout the day? So you're talking about it's giving you all this energy. You're talking about it's helping with your appetite control and you giving, giving you better um, cravings and stuff like that, curbing your cravings. But like, I don't see proof of that. So I think that's something even myself could do a better job at is looking at how can I show my audience that these products are working for me throughout the day. I know like Sarah does a really good job of like, showing her and her kids and her dog going for a walk in the afternoon. Like some, some people just want to take a nap at that point. And they're like, why does she still have energy at like six or seven or eight or 9 PM? Um, so I think that's something like even myself, I'm going to start implementing more of like, how can I highlight to my audience that I do have that sustained energy all day long? Um, because it's one thing to talk about it in the morning when you're first taking your products, but what does that look like carrying out throughout your day? Um, interacting with both posts and stories. Interacting is important because you have to build relationships. People don't buy from companies. They buy from people. That's why people have, or that's why companies advertise with people. That's why like Coca-Cola shows some woman drinking their soda or, you know, somebody wearing the clothes because it's like, if they just had the soda sitting on a table or, um, whatever like you're not building trust that's why they also hire celebrities because people for whatever reason trust celebrities <laughs> over us even sometimes it seems like kylie jenner will tell you to buy a lipstick and you'll buy it but god forbid your friends try and sell one um but it's important for you to build those relationships so you can build that trust because once people know you by you sharing your story they like you because you're nice you're uplifting you're showing a genuine interest in them and then they trust you because you have built that rapport with them. Um, that is when you will build that connection and they'll actually be willing to come to you. Um, the reason that stories is so important for interaction is because, or in messenger, if you can get into messenger, Randy and I had this conversation the other day is because I, I've given you guys this analogy, like they're, 
their timeline, their wall is kind of like the living room or the foyer. Like you're, it's the entrance place. And it's kind of like, it's a little awkward. Like, Oh, Hey, they're not going to like air out all their dirty laundry in their comment section. Um, if you can get into messenger and build a relationship, people are a little more open. It's like your bedroom. Um, they're a little more intimate. They're a little more willing to like tell you what's going on with them. And as Randy and I were talking about the other day, um, it also boosts you in their, in their, um, algorithm too, because messenger takes priority almost over anything. It's like messenger is the first thing that will trigger people to, for your stuff to start showing up in their timeline. And then it's like comments that are more than four words. And then it's a comment and then it's likes or whatever, but it allows you to connect with them on a different level. So I can kind of touch on to how you can do that because I, she was like, how do I get into messenger if they don't have stories? Um, so I gave her a couple examples of what I did. So like, let's say this girl was talking about like, are you bringing your kids trick or treating instead of me commenting on her post? I went into her messenger and I said, yeah, we're planning on bringing our kids. Um, but I saw this really cool thing of this person that made this like candy shoot out of a PVC pipe. And I thought that was a cool idea. So we might try that. And then her and I built off a conversation. She's a mom like me. So I know that I should start talking about mom stuff. Right. Um, another example might be like, I know Clara, for instance, today she had somebody that was complaining about how like she doesn't make enough money to get by, but she doesn't qualify for assistance. She's like, how do I handle that? I'm like, you need to build that rapport with her first. You need to empathize with her and not just go in for the kill. Um, so just building a relationship back and forth. Like I know if you've dealt with that sort of thing, you can relate to them. You can empathize with them. Like it is so frustrating when you go in and you you're struggling to make ends meet, but you don't qualify for anything or whatever that looks like down the road. You can continually say like, Hey, how are things going? Like, Da, 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 just checking in with them and continue to like, like love on their posts and stuff. And then eventually you can, you can bring it up once you feel like you've built some sort of rapport with them. And it can be along the lines of, you know, you had mentioned before that um, it was frustrating for you that you didn't qualify for assistance and you're still struggling to get by. Well, I wanted to tell you that I have something that could potentially help you. Would you be willing to open it and willing to like, take a look into it? And then some, something that I will be implementing is we'll be having weekly um, event Zooms. So I will be hosting and I will bring you guys into hosting those with me too, just so you guys get that experience um, where we'll talk about the products and the business opportunity and stuff like that. So that's something that you can expose them to, or you can put them in a three-way message, like third-party validation is so important if they say yes. Um, making a post. Now, making a post isn't the end all be all, obviously, but you have to show that your store is open, which means that you have to be talking about what these products or this business opportunity is doing for you. And I don't just mean talking about all the fluff, all the benefits that the, the company has listed on the side of the packaging. It means like, what is this emotionally doing for you? So an example of that might be like, I created a post today because you have to get into the mindset of what your audience is thinking. They see you wearing a sticker. They don't know what a DFT is. So I never use the term DFT. I always try to say like sticker or patch or whatever, because that's what your audience is thinking. And then, I mean, it's cool to say like energy and weight loss and all that stuff, but somebody wants to know like, why is it personal to you? Like, what is it doing for you so they can connect to your story and be like, that's how I feel. So I said, like, it gives me sanity on the days where my kids are testing my patients. Like, <laughs> um, it gave my children a mom they deserved. It helped me overcome an unhealthy relationship with food. It helped me stop a dangerous addiction to energy drinks. And most importantly, it gave me a better version of myself. So I laid out what are the things that moms and people struggle with and how this has helped me with that. You have to paint that picture. If you're constantly just posting about pictures of the product and saying like, oh, you have 20% off for you. Here's the energy, the weight loss, the appetite control, the mood support, the mental clarity, da, 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 da. They're like, okay, cool. But what's that actually going to do for me? Like, awesome that you say energy, but like, 
really what kind of energy you got to say like i drank a shitload of coffee before and now i don't because people relate to drinking the shitload of coffee or saying i was somebody who like would throw my phone across the room because i didn't want to hear the alarm go off again like really painting that picture so people are like god i've done that before so they want to reach out to you you got to show that your business is open um so those are our typical ipas adding to your network posting to your stories, interacting, and making some sort of post. Now there's like other things you can sprinkle in there too, but those are the main ones. Other things that are just as important that you need to figure out, okay, this is my business. I need to implement these things too, is your customers. We don't spend all this time building these relationships providing third-party validation with a three-way message, sending them out a sample, you know, giving them a discount. And finally they they agree to order and they order. And then we're just like gone. Like where, where did she go? Like that is not, we don't put all of that work into it to just give up on them because one, it's going to make them feel like a little bit of a number. And two, you're going to constantly be on that wheel spinning, 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 because you're losing customers just as quickly as you're bringing them in because you're not demonstrating that care for them. Maybe providing them with a plus line that might enhance their, their situation or changing up their shake flavor or showing them a different thing that might help them accelerate their goals. Like following up with your customers needs to be a continual thing. So figuring out where in the week or where in the month, besides just following up for auto ships, am I going to maintain those relationships? We have a great back office that shows you all of your people. Just check them off one by one. My throat is so dry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> another thing we also need to do is assess our marketing. So how is our marketing reaching our audience? And what do we need to do if it's not quite reaching people like we wish it would. So if you're looking through your posts and like one only gets one like, not that likes are like everything because the majority of the people that hop in your inbox typically never comment or like on anything anyways. But um, taking a look at like, okay, that got really good feedback. You can also cross reference it with um, your website traffic because that is a metric that is in the back office. I don't know if you guys all know that. So if you go into your back office, you click on reports, there's one that says website traffic. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it shows you like a graph too, where I know you can't see that at all. Can you? <laughs> oh yeah, no, you can. And it shows you like what days, how many people hopped on. Like today I had two and 12. So I think my message went well today. And yesterday I had four and 18. So I think whatever I talked about yesterday must have been good too. Um, it's a good way to kind of gauge too. Like what are the days that I'm getting more engagement and what did I post on those days? And then if people are really responding well to a certain type of post, post more stuff like that. Your audience is telling you they like it. Um, my kids always get like tons of likes on their pictures. So I try to like incorporate her where I can. Like yesterday I incorporated Brooklyn in my thing because I'm like, oh, Billia likes if she's in it because <laughs> she's so freaking cute. But um, looking at how it's effectively reaching your audience and then making sure that you're gearing your stuff towards that if they're if they're responding well, like it's something they like to see more of. So if like you get a post and it blows up, like do more content like that. Even if it's not product related, you're getting engagement. You can also see like, has my engagement dropped down? And maybe I do need to put some sort of interactive post up so that I can bring that back up. Asking opinions for things. Like the other day I was like, Bert, it's so cold out. Um, who's turning their heat on? And I got like a stupid amount of comments. And then the other day I was like, let's talk about positivity. Like what's something positive that happened to you in 2020? Because the world is so like, ugh, right now that I just wanted to bring some light out. Let's be that light for people. Think of ways that you can engage with people like what, and I typically don't get a whole lot of interaction when I ask people what they're grateful for. I don't know why. So that's why I was just like, tell me something amazing that happened to you in 2020. Use that one. You guys like totally go ahead and use it. I don't care. Um, following up with potentials. So having a running list, if you don't have a list system of who your potentials are, I encourage you to get some sort of notebook so that you can write their names down. 
of people that are potential potentials or having some sort of system. Like I have the colored heart system. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do follow-ups right now and I'll scroll through and look for like the blue hearts for people that have sampled minis and, and re reach out to them. Um, maybe if I have, I think it's a, is it a green heart. A green heart is like a potential and then I flip them to yellow after they order. Um, it's just an easy way for me to go through all of my messages or you can search for key terms or whatever, but the rule of thumb is the two, two, two rule that I use two days after the first time I follow up with them. And then I go another two days and then I'll do like two weeks. And if they're not, if they're, and if they're ghosting you only try twice and then give it up because it's not their time it's just timing we're in an abundant world there's billions of people you'll find somebody else to help like it, it'll be okay don't cling on those people that either aren't working the business or like for the example that we were talking about earlier um or that aren't showing you the respect to just even respond back to you after two times of just ghosting you and you see their little face traveling down you're like it's one thing if they're not checking it I, i'll sometimes pop in there and say like hey did i do something to offend you or i can certainly take you off my list if you'd like i just like to make sure that people that have expressed interest before know about what i got going on right now and they you they never say like no take me off your list i've never had anybody say that um i've had to say like no it's just not a really good time right now but you can continue to follow up um if you want that verbiage for that i can certainly provide that for you guys too and then your team how is your team doing? Um, checking in with your team, making sure that they have what they need. Um, following up with any, um, Sarah like disappeared and came back. She's kind of magic. <laughs> I, you probably have a clone and we just don't know it. <laughs> but um, your team, making sure you're going through your VIP reports, um, making sure that you're checking in with the people that have trusted you enough to join you in this business. Um, if they're not responding, again, let it be. Like your time is so valuable, way too valuable for you trying to drag people through the mud. Um, because the only thing that it's gonna do for you is cause you to be frustrated. I've been there, I've had, and it's hard. It's really hard, especially when you can see all the potential in the world in somebody and you're like, God, if you would just do it, like I know you would do so well, but you cannot physically drive to someone's house and force them to do something. Like I can't go to Claire's house and make her do her IPAs every day. I mean, I would love to come to your house and like hang out and do them, but like, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna be like, D -d -d. and I, this isn't a management position. It's a business. It is their business. You're responsible for your business. Yes, we mentor other people that come in, but you by, by no means should be forcibly trying to make somebody run their business if they're not willing to do it themselves. Um, we, I'm, I'm in a leader chat with Stephanie and there was a girl that came and asked, came in and asked a question today. She was like, how do I motivate my team? Um, she's like, I have a couple people, but there's some that just like, no matter what I do, I throw promos at them. They just won't do anything. And I hopped in there and I said like, one, they're matching your efforts always. So I, the first thing I always try to do is if I'm seeing a slow like a slowdown in my business is check myself in the mirror first am i showing up the way that i need to show up first because this is my business ultimately and then second i said like you're never going to be able to like motivate somebody you can inspire somebody to want to take action but you're never going to be the person that motivates to do something like that is something that has to come within them or internally. You can provide them with all the tools. You can be the resource for them. You can follow up with them. You can um, say, here's a hundred dollars off of a pack for one of your customers. But like ultimately at the end of the day, like none of that is going to help you move your business if they're not willing to meet you. So I, I, I like to think like you've got to match people's efforts. If they're wanting to, this to be a hobbyist sort of thing, tr then you fall up with them like it's a hobby. If there's somebody that's like, I want this, like you better be checking in with them and seeing how you can help them out. Um, and if you have somebody that's like running and their team is building super fast, like to help develop that person as a leader as much as you can. Um, so that's, and there was something else that I wanted to share too. 
um, that has to do with like hobby. Oh no, did I close out of it? I think I closed out of it. Oh, of course I did. That's okay. I have it right here. <clears throat> My mouth is so dry right now. So I got this checklist of how you might be like, what are some um, signs that you might be in a hobbyist mentality? You have a business that is costing you more money than it's making you. You're struggling with building a team. You get easily overwhelmed. You're finding yourselves busy all the time, but for whatever reason, not producing anything. You only work your business when you feel like it or, mot or motivated or when you feel motivated or it's convenient for you. You have no clear vision of what a better future would look like. Um, you focus mostly on the things that happened in the past and you're letting that define you. So I'm not here because this has happened to me kind of a mentality. Believe that money is a function of time and effort. So what that means is like, if you're thinking like you're only going to get money because you're putting more action in, then you're not thinking in abundance and how I can serve other people. You, fo you focus mostly on what you personally can get from your business. You don't have a system for how you're bringing on new people um, or prospecting customers or promoters. You aren't intentional about planning your time and you blame others for your lack of result or you play the victim. Kind of like what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, a real business owner has profits monthly. Um, they have a clear business growth plan that drives their action each day. So like, what is your vision for your plan? Where do you want to be? And I'm not just talking about maybe even this month, but like, what is your clear cut vision? Like, I know my vision is to grow my customer base within our team to over 10,000. And I want to have a team of 5,000 plus promoters. Like that is what my ultimate goal is. So every day I have to be working towards that. And I also have some other personal goals, but I know what my vision for my business looks like. And so when those days when I'm just like, I don't freaking feel like adding another person on social media, I have that readily available for me to see so that I know what my vision is going to be. Commits to work their business every day, regardless how you feel. If you're sick, if you're tired, I get it. Sometimes like we're so run down. Like I was super sick for those, like what, two weeks? I felt like a week and a half. Um, I was like, I still need to make sure that I'm showing up in my social media because and if you like, sometimes like you're legitimately, you can't move from bed and like, you're actually sick. I was telling, cause I know Clara, she had bronchitis and stuff. And I was telling her like, it's okay for you to step away from your social media. What I think would be the best thing to do is just say like, make a little post of you like in bed and like, I am dying or I'm really not feeling so well. So I'm taking a couple days off. So your audience knows that you're still there and you're not just ghosting because they're not thinking like, did she stop using the products? Is she still using that? Maybe I shouldn't reach out to her. Um, understands that money is a function of value and ser service, working smarter, not harder. Uses social media as a tool. So there, John Eric is this like social media guy. I had an opportunity to meet with him and work with him. And this was last, last year about this time actually. And he was talking about people use social media like a toy like you're scrolling it's a form of entertainment for you when you're in the social media business like your social media should be a tool it shouldn't be like i'm gonna go scroll and watch all the cat videos i use my tiktok as my toy like if i i like social media like i like to be on social media i like watching videos and that sort of thing but i have a dedicated time that i can do that and i understand like I have to have all my stuff done before I do that. So I like TikTok. <laughs> so I'll be like, if I'm doing like once I'll, um, before I pop open my TikTok talk app, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go follow 20 people before I do that. So it's not like I'm wasting my time. Um, you have a structure, structured schedule that is driven by your priorities. So like, yes, we do have other things going on besides our business. This is, it's not business. God, family, 
whatever. Like there, it is, your family is obviously a priority, but making sure that you're intentionally fitting it into those times, like knowing, um, like I'm unavailable usually. I mean, I can work my business while I'm at work if it's slow, but, and it's usually slow and we're coming in on a really slow season. So I'll be really available. But, um, I know from like 10 to three, I'm at my job. 9 30 i'm typically commuting but i always try to i try to do like a, me talking in my stories right before i walk into work and then i know that like my kids have football at this time so i can be there i can be present at football and like answering messages still um i know i make dinner and we have dinner time blocked off so i need to make sure that i'm intentionally working my business throughout those scheduled blocks that I can because this isn't meant to be a three four hour thing and if it's taking you three four hours to work your business I promise you there that there are things that you're doing when you think you're working your business when you're not actually working your business you're doing stuff like scrolling watching videos going to the timeline not being intentional about your interactions because each of these IPAs should only take you a sliver of time um, and then taking a hundred percent responsibility and ownership for your results I used to be the person. Why is this person moving so much faster than me? Why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? It's the second that you start reflecting inward, what are the actions that I'm taking in my life that is resulting in where I'm at currently? Not taking that as like, that's where I'm gonna remain permanently, but what have I done to warrant me to be in this spot? And what do I need to do to bring me to the future that I'm looking to accomplish? You have to have that personal accountability. Again, because one, I can't drive to your house and make you do things like you can tell me your goals all day long. You can tell me what you want to do, but I can't ultimately force you to do it. Like that is your own personal accountability. And sometimes it takes you being a crazy person and looking yourself in the mirror and saying, get your shit together. Like I've had to do that with myself. Like what the hell are you doing? Get your shit together. Um, sometimes you just have to have that come to Jesus talk with yourself. So accountability is so important with your own personal responsibility. So those are kind of the things I wanted to talk about. I think, like I said, it's so easy for us in the social media business and because you're running your own business for you to slide into those things because we are so conditioned to work a job. Somebody's telling you what to do every hour of the day. You clock in, you have a specific lunch time, you work on this project today, or these are the things that you have on your task list. And you're like, check, check, check. When you're running your own business, like you have to figure that out all on your own. It's not like there's this ultimate, I mean, I do have the IPA chat that is ultimately telling you what to do for the day, but it's up to you to actually do those things. There's not a boss standing over your shoulder saying you're going to get fired from your business if you don't do these things. Um, I had done, went through this like, what's his name? Brick, Eric Worry. He's like a big... I should let somebody borrow my book. I don't know. Oh, I didn't. Oh, no, no. Yes, I do. So I did this GoPro or whatever. And in there, he was talking about an exercise you can do if you feel like you're not putting enough action into your business or you feel like you're self-sabotaging, you're maybe um, procrastinating, whatever, whatever. He's like, do the exercise of like figuring out how much do you want to make a week with your business? And this is so eye-opening for me because one of my goal right now is to make 2000 a week. Well, not right now, but like, that's one of my goal, my futuristic goals. Like I actually just want to make a consistent thousand a week. So I want to make 2000 a week. What does that break down to like divide it by 40? Let's say we're going to a typical nine to five. So if I want to make 2000 a week, divide that by 40 hours, that's $50 an hour. So let's do it differently. Actually, let's divide it 2000 by seven. So it's $285 a day. So sometimes what I'll do is like, I th and this is something I think I should get back to is like writing the number down like $285 a day. That's what I want to make is $285 a day is what I did today. Deserving of $285 or is it maybe like two? <laughs> And that's a good way to like try to hold yourself accountable because we don't, like I said, we don't have that person that's like, you're making $14 an hour. And if you don't do these things, you'll be fired. Like, no, you just don't get a paycheck for the week or whatever. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm going to stop the recording so we can open it up for any questions or dialogue that you guys want to do.